Asians that were saying like, yeah, we, you know, it, we, they, we're talking about this topic and I don't know if it was specifically for this formation, but they, there was a group of Asians at one point saying like, yeah, last night we went out and like, we just, we sat on a hillside and we just like meditated and basically like just thought about a crop circle. And sure enough, the next morning there was a crop circle. Right. And there's that, that psycho, <laughs> you know, psycho uh, part yeah. of it where they were. Yeah. They somehow their minds create yeah. the energy necessary to create a crop wow. circle. Yeah, and keep in mind there's some there's something maybe if if what the smoking lady, just like in X Files, there's the smoking man in mm-hmm. but in real life in the realm of uh, crop circle research, there's the smoking lady. She's the one we listened to earlier. It was like, and there's the water that that's, that's underground, and <laughs> and she's got the the the, the scratchy voice. Uh, but she was talking about how there's some kind of magnetic earth energy that's going on in, in these locations. And some of the does. in some of the Eastern religions, though, I mean, they believe that the whole world was created with just thought. If and, you wow, if you can the bend power if, of the mind, and if you can bend a spoon, wow. why can't you bend a plant, a thing of barley? Or plant. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And that is the one thing that Jeff was talking about that did get me about all this was just how perfectly bent mm-hmm. they were mm-hmm. and not broken. Yeah, and that'll be in the of course in when we get to the science because there, there's a lot with the science, but that I, I think there's I think that the, there's the, some merit to that the weaving of it and the crossing yes. of it where it's not yeah. just it's not just Dave and Buster out there um, <laughs> at the arcade. Yeah, at, at the arcade <laughs> with a with a big wooden thing running it behind them because it wouldn't have overlapped. The way that it did, and it, yeah. it would have broken the, the stem. So I do give it that, that there's something <laughs> unique ab- about that part of it. Now, um, before we move on to our next topic, which is going to feature Jeff again, any, any other, anything else anybody will, Basically, there's no, there's no reason. It's just when you watch the documentaries, like, they're showing lots and lots of crop circles. Mm-hmm. But there's, like, just... Like, the, I picked the Julius one because the story about it being done in 25 minutes is a big part of the overall story of crop circles. Mm-hmm. You know, they was saying like, well, how fast can these things be done? Well, there's the Julius one, which, you know, is documented that supposedly it happened in under 25 minutes. That's what makes that notable. Um, the one that Jeff talked about on Milk Hill is probably, I mean, unless there's, I don't know, who knows since, and, and that's something we'll have to talk about later. It's almost like this was like, it's uh, why did this peak in the early mm-hmm. 2000s? Like, why does no one talk about it anymore? We'll have to get into that. But at the time, and maybe still, that was the biggest one. It was just massive, the mm-hmm. one that you talked about. And of course, the one that you just talked about was kind of like that first breakaway Mm-hmm. You know, and it, and if we go back to when, like when I was talking about earth, it's like okay, it's like, are the aliens saying we finally have their attention? Let's start doing something more than search. <laughs> yeah, one of the. Uh, so was that the uh, Eastfield pictogram? Was like that's the first message. Is that the key? And it looks like a key. Yeah, yeah. one of the uh, one of the aliens went back to the spaceship and said, "I saw one of them with a camera. Now's yeah. the time. Now go, <laughs> go, <laughs> and an airplane. Do it." Right. So we've been talking a lot about Doug and Dave. And uh, so we decided to actually make uh, Jeff the expert here on the the Doug and Dave story and phenomenon. <laughs> yeah, so true. that's where we're at, well, that's where we're at now in the crop circle story. So we're going to turn it back over to, right. to to Jeff again. To talk to us about Dave. Doug and Dave. Who are they, Doug and why and are they important Doug, to know? Dave Doug, and Buster, D- <laughs> Doug Bauer, and Dave Chorley. They were in Southern England, and a couple of English guys. 1991. They publicly announced that they were responsible for creating crop circles in the 1970s, and they said it was all a hoax. So um, they said they they were inspired by what was known as the Tully Saucer Nest case in Queensland, Australia in the 1960s. Tully is a town, and um, a farmer had claimed that he had seen a UFO and then found a flattened uh, circle of swamp weeds around where he'd seen the UFO. So uh, Doug and Dave, you know, they were having a pint, (laughs) I guess, or something, (laughs) and they said, wouldn't it be funny if... We uh, made some circles of our own. Uh, I made that part up about the pint. I don't know if this is oh. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be factual or not. But uh, <laughs> so uh, they um, they said, hey, hey, all right, let's let's go out. We're gonna make some crop circles. So um, they used simple tools: a plank of wood, rope, and a, a baseball cap fitted with a loop of wire to help them walk in a straight line. <laughs> Uh, they then demonstrated their method for making circles in front of a pack of journalists in 1991. And wouldn't you know, Pat Delgado was there, the seriologist. The seriologist yes. is an advocate of paranormal explanations of crop circles. And Pat, I don't know if Pat was a male or female, because, you know, Pat, it's Pat. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to say he, it may have been she. Patricia. Patricia, could have been Pat, you know, it's Pat. Is it a he, is it a she? Examined the circle 
and declared it was authentic before it was then revealed that it was a hoax. Mm. Pat, the seriologist, Pat, actually yeah, said it was authentic. That was, Pat had a rough day. <laughs> that yes. was when, like, the... <laughs> Pat, the seriologist. Yeah, Pat, the seriologist, yeah. yeah. It, know, uh, the whole crop circle phenomenon took a beating that it day. Did. Yeah, it did, it did. It when did. the guy was like, "Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm trained in this, and this looks legit." Yeah, and you just said "guy," but well, the, the Pat Pat said <laughs> he, was, he was using the gender gender. <laughs> I think it, I do think it was a guy because I remember I just remember oh, hearing okay. the story. I do okay. think it is a guy, but we'll just okay. okay. Pat Pat the serial Fair enough. A guy named yeah. Patricia um, checked it out and said, "It's you know, hey, this is real. I bone you know, whatever." And then they said, "Oh no, no, this is actually Dave's Doug and Dave's uh, <laughs> work." So. Um, they then then they then claimed to be responsible for all circles, all circles mm-hmm. made prior to 1987, and for more than 200 cro- crop circles between 1978 and 1991. Now, here's where things get nutty. Uh, they also said that there were um, 1,000 other circles that they did not make, mm-hmm. that they could not explain how they were made. So. It wasn't all done. Even in their storytelling, like they confuse us. Yes. They're like we were we're responsible for every crop circle up until yeah. But th- but mm-hmm. there's a bunch that w- we're not responsible for. Like uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But this is an era so basically like everybody's kind of fast. So what year did they come out and publicly was it what what year did 91. you have? 91 that's what I have. Yeah. Okay, so basically this thing's growing in the 80s. Uh, mm-hmm. It basically, mm-hmm. re- but it really takes off. The '90s was like the turning point. And again, the, that was when uh, Matt's crop circle, um, Eastern. right? Was that '90 90 or '91 or does? But I, I, probably I, I before Doug like, and Dave. So it was either '90 90 or '91. But that's that was kind of the turning point, mm-hmm. or a turning point, like Gettysburg, and um, July 1990. I thought mine yeah, was 1990. 1990. Yeah. So right at the turning point, then as the interest is picking up another notch Doug and Dave come out and like oh yeah we've we've done every crop circle since what you, you said 1978 or something like that Jeff uh, they said that um, all circles made prior to 1987 yeah and yeah <laughs> I don't know Fred there's something about you not believing that the farmer says there's no footprints but you're going to take him at his word but you're not going to take Doug, Doug and Dave at their word uh, <laughs> I'm just saying there's a flaw zing. in your own logic yeah. I could also bring you out to a field and show you what happens when I drag a rake behind me as I walk. Yeah. It's just going to cover things up. I'm just saying you, you can't agree with everything that the seriologists say. But not Doug and Dave. It, but not believe what Doug and just yeah. totally dismiss Doug and Dave yeah. for getting one year confused. <laughs> So, and I actually, when we get to the, what do you believe? I can, I'm going to delve a little more into the Doug and okay. Dave. So, well, the, uh, some of the things that people say about Doug and Dave, number one, a uh, couple of things. So I'm not sure if both are so one is definitely deceased. Mm. Okay. Um, I was watching another documentary, just, I think last night, just to prep for this, a different one than we had watched. Um, and in that documentary, they mention how one of them has, is, has passed on, and like, and so if it's all Doug and Dave, and it's like one's dead, and yet crop circles are still happening. But I'm not sure if they're both because this was 1991. This was 18. And they were old guys then. They weren't. Thomas mm. Edison's still dead. Yeah. And there's a light bulb up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that that's just the fact that one of them's dead, and there's still crop circles doesn't dismiss that he didn't. Well, it dismisses it, it. It dismisses that it's just still the t- just still the two of them. It does doing dismiss all. That's the fact all. that it's that still is all, him. and that's a minor, mm-hmm. minor thing, anyway. So, yeah, obvious. Um, and then now there is some things, and we'll talk about this a little bit later too when we get into the the the, the white. I think it's called White Castle or whatever, but or, uh, not White Castle, but it's the story I'm supposed to talk <laughs> about. Burger. Castle it's Hill. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but people say that there is a concerted effort to kind of uh, shut shut people up about mm-hmm. this, to kind of just turn it into a hoax, and that like Doug and Dave were part of this, like almost like a conspiracy to let's say that you know let's show that these can be done by man. Let's say that we did all these, and then like let's catch a so called expert. Like, let's show this to a so-called expert and, like, get him to think that it's real and we can immediately just discredit the whole thing, which is kind of interesting where at the beginning of the episode, Jeff has really never given it two thoughts since then. 
you know, I was only eight in 1991. How old were you? Well, you were older, right? Yeah, I was older. I don't know. <laughs> but, but that's why, like, <laughs> at eight, I, I don't recall the Doug and Dave thing at eight years old. I don't know if you, well, Matt doesn't. Know. But you're right. saying you recall back in 1991 when the Doug and Dave thing came yeah. out. I and did. that, and you, and, and <laughs> now, if it's true, then you bought it. But if it was also what they wanted to accomplish... Mm-hmm. was discrediting they did a good job because you obviously bought it from 91 up until that's true now yeah. as well at least huh mm-hmm. anything else on doug and dave not yet not yet okay <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the balls of light <laughs> all right we're going to move on to the the strange uh anomaly of these balls of light that are often associated with crop circles um now the balls of light balls is of light. the ball. Yeah, the <laughs> balls. Show you the balls of light. <laughs> so you guys, I'm sure remember watching the podcast where there's clips yeah. of these balls of lights flying around. Um, the balls of light are heavily attributed with the crop circle phenomenon because in a lot of cases, um, someone will see these balls of light and then like within a few days there happens to be a crop circle at that location. Like flashlights or maybe headlamps, <laughs> something. Um, the other thing too, well, uh, there's a lot of instances. This is something that gives it at least a phenomena a little credibility in terms of the balls of light because um, – a lot of instances where the people will see these balls of light in a particular area, and then within a matter of minutes, there'll be military helicopters um, mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. area basically chasing the ball of light. Now, what you said, like, you know, we don't go outside with our flashlight at night and suddenly get chased around by military helicopters. So there's, there's a little bit of, uh, if that's going on, and people are witnessing that as well, there's something to give the credibility that, I'm gonna have to stop. I'm gonna have to stop you right yeah, there. My wife and I lived in a in a house on the eastern shore of Maryland, mm-hmm. which is very farmy. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that's the appropriate adjective. <laughs> it's very farmy, agricultural. Yeah. <laughs> no, farmy. It's farmy, and right in our backyard was a field. Yeah. Of well, I'm not an agriculturalist or cereologist. <laughs> right? I don't study cereal. Um, but there was a field of something, and one night we woke up to a bunch of helicopters, mm-hmm. right, oh, yeah. over our house. Uh-huh. I didn't say we lived in the greatest of neighborhoods, yeah. but we had you know, a bunch of helicopters over our house. Turns out that they were actually hunting down somebody in that field who was from Baltimore peddling yeah, right. like 40 pounds of heroin mm-hmm. onto the eastern shore. So, no, you and I don't go out with our flashlights and get chased by helicopters. But maybe somebody's running away from the cops with a flashlight and then gets chased by the helicopter, much like this guy in my backyard. On the eastern shore. Oh, because there was a f- uh-huh. because it was farmy. I was gonna say, well, this isn't happening. Right. But you just said it was a farmy area. He, the guy was actually sleeping. Had a whole house made in this farm, yeah. area, like in, in this stock. Uh, I mean, they were up to my chin. I mean, they were tall. Uh-huh. So the point is, no, we don't. But maybe they were in that field mm-hmm. running from something to begin with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I don't think one discredits the other. But the other, the other <laughs> thing that just is just interesting about the balls of light is that it's not always. It's not. Um, solely solely connected to the crop circle phenomenon. It is connected to the crop circle phenomenon in that people in southern England, they see these balls of light a lot. Um, it is common that crop circles appear after this mm-hmm. these instances occur. Hmm. There's even um, a hill in southern England called Golden Ball Hill. And it's been called Golden Ball Hill for hundreds of years because for, you know, going back a long time, there was you know, people always saw golden balls of light. So there's actually a hill called Golden Ball Hill that's been called that for a very long time, which is just something interesting. Um, but these things are associated with a lot of just strange phenomena. I mean, they, they're seen all over the world. Cities, um, there some NASA Arizona, footage. Not long ago. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You know, those show uh, shot from the, um, what do you call this, the space station, mm-hmm. you know, up in, in, up, up in space. Yeah. And uh, then a ball of light. <laughs> <laughs> she's so these balls like they're they're, they're a strange phenomena mm-hmm. uh, uh mysterious but it is there is a connection to uh, uh especially they're being seen in that area and they're connected to crop circles any other, but before we go on any, any thoughts jeff what do you think the balls of light are uh i think they are ionized plasma vortex <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I do explain <laughs> no i don't but uh <laughs> i'm reading this uh from uh-huh. uh historian greg jeffries Greg Jeffries says the mounting body of evidence suggests that a rare form of electromagnetic energy called an ionized plasma vortex 
is what is uh, behind this ball of light or ball lightning. Mm-hmm. And uh, another physicist, Dr. Terence Meaden, was among the first to explain that patterns were the result of atmospheric phenomena, and he suggested that wind currents and ionized plasmas 